Uh, my name is Enrica. I'm the Queen's organizer for Plant Powered Metro New York. Plant Powered Metro New York uh, empowers people to find better health and overcome chronic disease through whole food plant-based nutrition. We offer evidence-based education, resource, and support to create community and inspire change through the New York metropolitan area. Um, this is Joshua Spodek, and I'm, power, I'm partnering up with Plant Powered Metro New York, whose work I love. Let me just check to make sure, is the sound coming through okay? Can, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. And what I want, so before we get started, I want to give a little background about myself. But the main thing is I want to show people how I make what I call my famous no packaging vegan stew. It's simple. It's easy to make. It's, it gives you a lot of food for not a lot of money. And it's very accessible. And so the core of it is I want to, the, the two main core parts of this presentation is I want to show people how I make my stew so that you can make it at home. And I want to take questions and answers if there are people out there to uh, answer questions for. Before I get started, I want to describe a little bit about myself. I am a, well, I think I'm a regular guy. I grew up, I'm just about 50 years old. Um, I have some advanced degrees, but all this stuff about food up until, up until about six up until about six, six or, seven or seven years ago, up until about six or seven years ago, I didn't know anything about this. I knew a fair amount about cooking, but most of my cooking was uh, actually eating out probably five or six nights a week. I live in Manhattan and cooking was generally a box of dried pasta, some red sauce. Maybe I would fry some garlic and onions first. Um, and then about six or, uh, I live across the street from a firehouse, so every now and then they make a lot of noise. About six or seven years ago, I, you know, I read the headlines and I see how much plastic there is in the ocean and how much we're polluting and so forth. And, you know, like most people probably, I thought governments, corporations, they should do something about this. But I also looked down at my garbage and thought, this garbage here, I'm responsible for. And I want to do something about that. Even if other people should do more stuff than me, I still wanted to take, take care of my responsibility. So I gave myself this challenge to see if I could go for a week without buying any packaged food. At the time, I thought I had no idea how I'd do it. In fact, it took me six months from when I had the idea to when I actually did it. Uh, I made it two and a half weeks, though. And that was the first time that I boiled beans on the stove from dry. And that's when I started figuring this out. So at that time, I'd throw out my garbage once a week. After a little bit of practice and I get better at it, I'd throw out my garbage once every two weeks, then every month then every six months. And now over here, this is, this is my garbage bag that I use. And the last time I emptied this, this is all my garbage in the house since December. All the wet garbage take it to um, where they pick it up in the farmer's market. And if people want to know how I get by with using so little garbage, well, this is a big, a big reason how. Now, the original reason why I started experimenting with this stuff was, to, was for the environment, was to pollute less. But that's not why I'm giving this presentation here, although I think that's a very important thing is not to pollute so much. It's very accessible, and most people don't get how accessible this stuff is that what I'm about to cook, you could cook pretty much almost anywhere. Like if you're in a food, people often say to me, Josh, you can do it because you live right by Union Square. You got a farmer's market right there. And actually, one of the last presentations that I gave before the, the, um, the pandemic was I was invited by a single mom from the Bronx, and she invited me up to a community group up there where I gave a, a, dem a demonstration like I'm about to give to you. And to show that anyone could do this. After I gave the presentation and uh, we took Q&A, the first person said, oh, you can do that down there, but you, we can't do this up here because we don't have the stuff that you do. But the next person said, actually, I know where you can get beets. I forget exactly what. And the next person said, actually, I know where you can get these other things. And after it ended, the woman who organized it came to me and said, Josh, you planted the seed. Now, it, it's not that they can do it right away, but we can figure out how to do this. And I want more than anything else for people in food deserts to get to know what to do 
so that farmers markets can go there. Because a lot of times I hear people say, we, we need more Walmarts. Walmarts impoverish neighborhoods. Farmers markets make them grow. Uh, there's another story about um, this guy, Tony Hillary, started a, an urban farm called uh, Harlem Grown. So in 2008, he's volunteering and to get to so he he went across he got the students to come and help empty the lot and then they built these um, flower beds or plant beds and so he got some uh, he said, okay, it's time to plant. So he got the kids, he gives them some seeds for chard. And he says, okay, kids, put the chard in. And so they plant the seeds, they cover it up, they water it, and the kids look up and say, where's the chard? So he says, well, it takes a month, you gotta grow the stuff. So they water and they wait and they wait and they wait and, they wait, and the chard comes up. And one day he gives, he clips the chard and what was the plan from the start was always giving them all the vegetables. So they take it home. And the next day when they come in, he says, how was the chard? And they go, our moms threw it out. I said, what? They didn't know what to do with it. We've lost at least, some places have just lost at least one generation that they didn't know what to do with chard even when they just had it. And I want to change. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my famous no packaging vegan stew. And I'm going to show you one way to do it. It's not quite a recipe. It's more a formula. There's four main ingredients, actually five now. And it always works, and you can do it differently, but following the same formula. So I have here, I hope you can see it. Can you see it? The, and anyway, these are lima beans that came from dry like this. And I just soaked them overnight. So I put the legumes in, oh, let me point out, this is the pot that goes into the pressure cooker. I'm gonna fill this with vegetables and beans. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna put the lid on and turn it on. People who don't know what, how pressure cookers work, and I didn't know any of this beforehand. I figured this out. A pressure cooker, you know, if you want, okay, these beans, if I soak them in water, just water, they will absorb some water, but they won't cook. To cook them, they need to get hot enough. The water molecules have to bounce around fast enough to get into the bean, so that boiling. A pressure cooker, lets you cook at a higher temperature so the water molecules are bouncing around faster and they can poof, cook the beans faster. So step one is, so the four ingredients are um, a legume, which could be lima beans, it could be split peas, it could be lentils, it could be black eyed peas, and it could be any kind of soybeans or whatever, chickpeas. And I put them in first. Then I put in a grain. So I could put in barley. I get all this stuff from a bulk food store and all of these things can stay, the dried legumes, the grains, um, most of these ingredients can stay on your shelf for years. So I could put in rice if I wanted. This is red rice. I could put in whole wheat instead. This is whole wheat. Um, what else do I have here? Could put in, this is kamut, which is some special grain. Uh, so there's different things that I could put in. These things are all like, like barley is one of my favorites. It's something like a dollar a pound. So it's very cheap, it stays forever. And the proportions, you can really vary a lot. I just put in a quarter cup, but I could put in double amount and it would taste different, but it would still work. So I got legume, a grain, then I put in a green leafy vegetable. So in this case, I have some beets, so the beet greens, I'm gonna chop those off and chop those and put them in. And one of the great things about a pressure cooker is that if you cook, when you cook these things together, they all mix the flavors incredibly fast. By the way, all I do is chop and add. I never do anything more than chop. So I have one knife here. I got this knife at Ikea for like 10 bucks. I have one chopping board, I have a sink, and I have an outlet to plug in a pressure cooker. And other than that, I don't need anything else. 
So I put in a green leafy vegetable. Now I decided also, I happen to have some cauliflower and a lot of people throw away the cauliflower leaves and don't realize that they're edible. So I'm going to, just for the fun of it, put in some cauliflower leaves just to show you it works with any green leafy vegetable and not to throw away this delicious, nutritious part of the cauliflower. I could have done the same thing with broccoli or any other green leafy vegetable too. So I hope everyone can see me chopping. Is this visible? Can people see the chopping board? Okay, my cameraman is saying, indicating yes. So again, all I'm doing is chopping into pieces that are roughly this size. Something I like them to fit on a spoon. Then the next thing I have, again, legume, grain, whole grain, um, green leafy vegetable, and now I'm gonna put in some beets. I'm just gonna chop off the top, which sometimes has a bit of dirt on it, and the bottom, which has these stringy things on it. Yeah, just one, one second. We're good, so, we're fine. we've got all of our participants here and ready to roll. Okay, I hear from Enrica that I can go. My understanding is that you've seen me put in the legumes, you see me put in the grain, you see me put in the green leafy vegetable. So everyone sees. So I got beet greens, I got lima beans, but it could have been any other legume. And now I'm gonna chop up these beets. But, you know, I was kind of tossing up, I could have put in sweet potatoes and that would work just as well. And I was going back and forth on which I should do. And for that matter, I have these collard greens over here, which are looking really beautiful. Oops. But we're doing beets and beet greens. So I'm gonna chop them up into pieces that are roughly, Aren't these beautiful? Everyone's asking, first of all, if the recipe could be shared to the group, and if the legumes are picked up. Okay, so I heard the question is, can the recipe be shared? Yes, although it's more of a formula than a recipe, because, um, See, it's a legume, it's a green leafy vegetable, it's a starchy vegetable, it's a grain, and then you'll see at the end I'm gonna put in uh, nutritional yeast. If you switch, and this one is lima beans, but if I did black beans, it would work. If I did kidney beans, it would work. If I did azuki beans, it would work. And if instead of the beets, I put in carrots or sweet potatoes, it would also work. So it's those ingredients in virtually any proportion, they always work. That's, what's, that's what I, sorry, I keep looking over mine. And that's why I don't think of it so much of a, of a recipe so much as a formula. And that's why I think it's so um, versatile. A lot of people ask me, Josh, how often do you eat this? Do you eat it all the time? And I go, yes, but I believe that I've never had the same stew twice. Because what I'm doing now, if I did the exact same thing, but instead of lima beans, I put in split peas. I would do everything exactly the same, but you would not identify it as the same thing at all. And so the vegetables, for example, since I get them always in season at the farmer's market, they're always, they're generally vegetables I haven't seen in 10 months. So I'm getting new stuff all the time. And if I did this with, instead of um, beet greens, if I did it with uh, broccoli, or I did it with cauliflower, or I did it with uh, um, chard, or kale, it would always work and it would be always different. So that's why I, I try not to say it's a recipe so much as a formula. All right, so, uh, and what was the second question? Will the recipe be shared with the group? So the, I hope people get that that's the recipe. There's another question. Oh, were, were the vegetables pre-cooked? Nothing's pre-cooked. The only thing I did before starting this was to wash the vegetables and to put them out. Normally I'd be getting them out of the fridge. So now I'm gonna put in Water. And now I put it in the pressure cooker. Oh, 
if people are not used to getting a pressure cooker, I went online, sorry, I keep looking in the wrong place. Um, I could put my screen up, but it might be a little complicated, but I just went on eBay and typed in pressure cooker. And I also went into Craigslist and I typed in pressure cooker. Actually, I'll show it. Hopefully this will, this will work. So can people see the computer? This is eBay and we got pages and pages and pages of pressure cookers, $32, $44. They're pretty cheap. And then um, if you're based in New York City and you type in pressure cooker for, for Craigslist, there's pages and pages and pages of pressure cookers. And then I happen to go by earlier, if you're in New York, there's a store lot less. There happens to be one not too far from me. And there was a huge pile of pressure cookers that were on sale that were new. Josh, what do you have? What's, what's the brand that you have? This happens to be the Cuisinart, I, I believe it's the CPC 600. Okay. It's a six quart one. But there's a million kinds, they all work. I've, I've gone to friends' places and used their pressure cookers and they're all basically the same. I have this idea that somewhere in China there's a giant factory and outside one door it says Cuisinart and outside another door it says um, uh, Instapot and outside another door it says whatever because they all work basically the same. So I put this on, I plug it in. I set it for the, the amount of time depends on the legume that you put in. So, and then I press start, that's all the work. So if it weren't for all the technical stuff going on, it's usually like five, 10, sometimes 20 minutes of prep time. And now this is gonna start cooking. Uh, and I put in, you saw how much I put in, it's stuff for a couple meals. Usually I fill it all the way to the top and I have enough, it's usually 10 meals worth of food and usually about $10 worth of food goes into it. So it's usually something like a dollar meal. The first one takes a little while to cook, but then after this, to reheat it, I have meals usually lasting for a couple days and to reheat it takes about 30 seconds. Um, what's, ha what's happening now, the, if people are not used to pressure cookers, right now the pressure is low, it's heating up, I don't know if you can hear it's clicking a little bit because it's like, as it heats up, it makes a little noise. Then as it heats up, it'll displace the, uh, it'll heat up the air and the pressure will go up and you'll hear a little steam coming out and then the valve will close. And then this number, the six will start counting down to five, four, three, two, and, it'll, um, and then it'll be done cooking. And then I'll open it up and you'll get to see the food. Um, if, no one, if, you've, if you've never used a pressure cooker before, I highly, highly recommend getting a pressure cooker. If you haven't used one before and you're getting used to using it for the first time, I recommend using it in the following way. Well, I mean, it'll have an instruction book. Follow the instruction book. But the first thing I recommend doing is just getting some dried beans from a bulk food store or you can get them from a regular store and um, just make beans once. Follow the pressure cooker for the right amount of time. And then the next time you do it, then start chopping up vegetables and putting them in two, and then eventually do the recipe that I just did. So uh, the formula that I just did of legumes, a whole grain, green leafy vegetable, starchy vegetable, and then the nutritional yeast, which I'll put in at the end. Works every time. Joshua, do you ever pre-soak your um, legumes overnight? My grandmother yes, these. Oh, I should mention that was one thing I did. The lima beans I pre-soak, okay. I happen to, I'm very lazy. And so I prefer things that don't need to be pre-soaked. Lentils don't need to be pre-soaked and um, split peas don't need to be pre-soaked. So I tend to cook those more just because I don't have to think about it the night before. But with these, you just put in a bowl, cover it with water, let them soak overnight. What happens if you don't pre-soak them and then you put the, like beans? In a pressure cooker, if you don't pre- So the question I got is, if, what happens if you don't pre-soak it? In a pressure cooker, It'll still work, you just have to cook it a little bit longer. Okay. So actually you don't have to pre-soak it. I just do it anyway. Okay. Oh, now, um, 
I said nutritional yeast, and I don't know if people know what nutritional yeast is. It's this powder that you can get it, I get it at a bulk food store, but you can also order it online. And it's nutritionally, it, uh, it's, I love this stuff. It tastes really good. Um, and so I put in, it really, you don't have to put it, in, put it in at all, but if you put it in, it adds, I think it's umami flavor. And it's also extremely nutritious. It's high in protein and it's high in fiber and high in B vitamins. I'm vegan and the kind that I get is also fortified with vitamin B12. So I get tons of vitamin B12 as well. So um, I just have this little bowl or I mean it's a measuring cup. And if I just put that in, that's all I have to put in and it'll taste really good. Now, I also am going to put in, where is it? These are my containers of, of salt and pepper, which I also get in bulk. I just put them in these bowls for convenience. So you put in salt and pepper to taste. By the way, I put in whole peppercorns just because I like to bite into it and get that burst of flavor. And are people out there fans of Dr. Michael Greger? If they are, they know about the Daily Dozen. And he recommends, he always recommends turmeric. So I have turmeric in here and I have cumin in here. They pair together pretty well, but I could just as well put in other spices or not. I generally on my own do salt and pepper. The cumin and the turmeric, they taste really good too. It's, it's, you really don't have to put spices in, but if you do, it adds a nice flavor. So um, I'll put in, and again, I, I can put in a lot or a little, and it's just a little, it always works. I know it's like people always ask me, how much of this, how much of that, like the specifics. I put in a lot, it's a pretty strong flavor. I put in a little, it's more of the vegetable flavors. So I happen to be putting in about a teaspoon of each. I hope I don't sound like I'm being too casual about the, the proportions, but people who come here, when they come over multiple times, I just do it with more one time, less another time, and they start saying like, oh, I get it. You really can vary these proportions a lot. So I put in very little salt. I don't know, maybe that's a fair amount of salt. And that's, I've just done all the preparation for it for roughly, usually, I mean, usually I put in more and it would be like 10 meals worth of food and that would have been all the prep time. I guess I can show you. Here's one that I made the night, maybe a night or two ago. And I don't know if you can see that there's beans and greens. So this one is black beans. And I don't know what greens I put in, but it's the same thing and it tastes really good. But it looks very different. And now I was hoping to take it, let me see. Can I take a few questions? Um, Josh, I, I have a question for you. Um, you have uh, told us in your bio that you are very most mindful of garbage um, and you take your garbage out once a year. Can yeah. you tell us about that? How, how did you get to, first of all, with all your veggies, your, what do you do? You take your, what do you do with your com, your compost? What, how, how do you handle your garbage? Tell us about Okay, that. can everyone hear Enrica asking the question? The only person I see is Donnie. So if he nods, then I can tell because <laughs> I've got this gallery view. So, the question was, um, I don't throw out my garbage very much. And does that mean people didn't get to see what I talked about before with my garbage? Yes, yeah, so if you could, if you could tell oh, us. I didn't about know that. that. Okay. All of this began about five or six years ago when I looked down at my garbage and I saw that I produced a lot of garbage. And I didn't like that. I mean, you, you, we all know about the plastic crisis. There's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish and things like that. And most pe I thought, like most people, the government, corporations, they should all change this stuff. But I looked at my garbage and thought, this is my garbage. I'm responsible for this. This is going to be in someone's world. And I can do something about mine. I want to take responsibility for my pollution. And so I gave myself this challenge. Could I go for one week without buying any packaged food? Now, living in Manhattan, I got every restaurant, every cuisine in the world is right out here. And I would eat out all the time. 
cooking at home for me meant generally I buy some dry pasta, some red sauce in a jar, maybe for a little variety, I'd fry up some garlic and onions and maybe put a little zucchini or broccoli in with the stew, with the, um, with the red sauce. But I didn't really cook much at home. And so I decided I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to go for one week and not buy anything packaged. I thought, I, I thought it would be a disaster. And at the beginning, it really was because I was, everything was, like I was doing a lot of steamed vegetables for a while, but it was also the first time that I cooked dried beans from scratch and I cooked them on the stove. That takes a long time. I tried cooking in the rice cooker, that made it faster. And eventually I learned about pressure cookers and started cooking in a pressure cooker. Anyway, so I started, I, for two and a half weeks I didn't buy anything. I, I made it two and a half weeks. After that I thought, let's see how long I can keep this going. And in the keeping going, I wasn't able to keep it at absolute zero, but I cut back a lot. So when I tried the experiment at first, I threw out, I threw out my garbage maybe once a week. With practice, it became once every two weeks. With more practice, it became once every month. With more practice, it became once every three months. Later, it became once every six months. Once there's a blog post, if you look at my blog, where I have a video showing the first time that I made one full year without throwing out my garbage once. The last time I throw my, so here's my garbage. This is one, this, the last time I emptied my garbage was, it's funny, I'm like showing my garbage on TV. So the last time I emptied this was December. So we're in September now, October, so it's been like 10 months. And it's my, I thought my food variety was gonna go down, but it's really gone up. I have much more variety than ever before. It's cheaper, it's more convenient. See, I, people think eating healthy is expensive. Not, not knowing how to cook is expensive. Once you know how, like when I come home late, I can make one of these really quick because the, the ingredients are always here, you know, I have like, I got beans all over the place that just aren't going to go bad. And there's always stuff here that I can always make stuff with. Um, also, yeah, some along the, like the different things that I would get, I don't know if people can see, can you see over here? Yeah. This is um, vinegar that I'm, I just learned that I could actually make some vinegar as we speak right now. To make vinegar, all you have to do is chop up apples Put it in water and just let it sit for a while. So here's one, here's another one. This one has a little bit of the, the, the mother on top if people know what that is, the, the stuff that's growing in it um, that turns it into, into acetic acid. And so that, why did I learn this? Because I was buying vinegar and it was one of the things that was producing the most garbage because of the bottles that I got the vinegar in. So I looked up online, how can I make vinegar from scratch? And it turns out you can do that. And it was really easy. Also here, this is sauerkraut, except it's with beet greens instead of cabbage. So that one I just did on my own. And okay, so first I learned how to make sauerkraut, which is you just chop up um, um, cabbage, put some salt on it, squish it all together, and put it in a container so that, um, and let it sit for a while. The first time I did it, it didn't work very well. The second time I did it, it didn't work very well. But by the third or fourth time, it started working really well. And so this was, I had all these extra beet greens. And so I just experimented. It would work the same with the sauerkraut as it did with the beet greens. And it worked. And it tastes remarkably good. Um, so I kept finding more and more things that I could do without buying packaged stuff. One time, I was curious about bread. So I went online, and I searched, and could you make bread in the pressure cooker? Turns out you can. So I made bread in a pressure cooker. Actually, these, I, I don't know if people can see that this is whole wheat berries. So I buy the wheat like this, and I happen to get the Vitamix, which is like a pretty high-level blender, but I got a factory reconditioned old one, so I got it cheap. And I can put the wheat berries in there and grind it into flour really quick. I would do it, but right now there's some other flour in there that I just grind up. And I just do more and more things of figuring out every time I get something that's packaged, I figure out how to do it without getting the packaging. And it just keeps, I just keep learning more and more. So this is still heating up the water. I can feel it warming up. Any other questions? Uh, so we have, uh, how much, what seasonings do you use? So what seasonings do I use? I heard. So um, 
my go-to stuff is really actually no seasonings because the vegetables, no, everyone comes over. This happens all the time. People say, people, when people are here, not so much during the pandemic, I do this with people and they often ask what seasonings you put in. And I say, I don't put any in. And then they taste it and they're like, oh, it's, oh wait, no, I'm telling the wrong story. Um, oh, this is what happens. A lot of times I make the stuff, I serve it to them. They see everything that I do. They taste it and they say, hey, this is really good. What's in it? Like they see every ingredient that I put in it. And I think that in their minds, they see vegetable, vegetable, vegetable. And they think doesn't taste good, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't taste good, doesn't taste good. And then when they taste it, they're like, oh, this tastes good. There must've been something else put in. The vegetables on their own with the nutritional yeast taste really good. I, it's like hard to believe, but you really don't have to put anything in. Now, if you want to, I happen to like the turmeric, cumin, pepper, salt mix. Salt and pepper work just fine on their own. Uh, but you can put in any, let's see, what have I put in lately? I tend to put in what I get from, like if I go to the farmer's market and they have sage, I might buy some sage. If they have uh, lavender, I might buy some lavender. If they have rosemary, I put in, might, might put in rosemary. It's very, what I'm giving you is like, to me it feels like it's like telling you wear black. And then you can put almost anything on top to accompany it and it'll go well with it. Joshua, um, I know you use a lot of nutritional yeast, but somebody's saying their spouse can't eat it. Do you, do you use anything else uh, for a cheesy flavor instead of nutritional yeast? Well, I'm vegan, so I'm, I don't put in cheese or anything like that. You can, I, sometimes I do it without the nutritional yeast. It tastes good, but it doesn't fill me up as fast. So the nutritional yeast is really filling. And I really like that flavor. If you... If you eat meat, which I don't, you could put in meat. Actually, I've been, I've been experimenting lately with seitan. This here is vital wheat gluten, which I buy in bulk. And I, could, I can make that into, you mix that with a little bit of water and you get seitan, which if people don't know what that is, it gives it a very meaty texture. Um, if people, what I want to get across here is to make just this and then experiment. If you just put in legume, uh, green leafy vegetable, whole grain, um, starchy vegetable, and, um, and nutritional yeast, and then just vary among those. So the, the legume, I tend to go, my most common ones are, um, most common are um, green split peas, Lentils, but lentils, there's green lentils, there's black lentils, there's um, dal, which could be orange, and there's lots of different varieties of those. And so each one is a slightly different flavor, slightly different texture. I put in a lot of kidney beans and um, pinto beans. I don't put in a lot of, I don't do black eyed peas that often, but sometimes. So say there's 20 types of beans. Say there's 20 types of green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables can be broccoli, it could be um, Brussels sprouts, it could be cabbage. And how many types of cabbages are there? There's purple, there's green, there's Napa. And if you want to do kale, there's like dinosaur kale, there's curly kale. Or if you want to do chard, there's Swiss chard, there's rainbow chard. Uh, if you want to do spinach, how many types? There's several different types of spinach as well. So say there's 20 types of those. And then for the starchy vegetable, um, my most common ones are probably uh, sweet potatoes, of which there's yellow, there's orange, there's purple, there's white. There's regular potatoes, again, purple, white, yellow, different kinds of those. Um, I could have put in, right now there's a lot of squashes and there's gonna be a lot more squashes over this. So there's acorn squash and there's butternut squash and there's different types of pumpkins. There's summer squash. Um, I could put in carrots and there's purple and there's orange and there's yellow and there's lots of different varieties of those. And so there's, say there's 20 types of those. Right there, if you have 20, 20 times 20, you have 800 different types of stews. So that's why I say I've never had the same stew twice. And I tend to have stuff, since I'm always buying in season, I tend to, buy, I tend to have stuff that I haven't had for 10 months. So you can put in lots of different spices, but you don't have to. And I recommend trying it a few times, just getting the flavors of the vegetables. Any other questions? And I hope people can hear this starting to, oh, so on this particular model, I don't know if you can see 
that this little dot next to the 0.06, I don't know if you can see that, but if you can't, that means that it's now the pressure is up and it's gonna be six minutes from now. Now this clock is gonna start counting down because the pressure has gotten up. So any other questions? Um, let's see, do you add onions or garlic? Oh, onions and garlic, I'm so, yeah. Yes, I top it with um, onions and nuts. Oh, I apologize for getting to say all this. So I always put on, you notice that I didn't put any olive oil in or any oil at all, because I like whole foods. So right now there's virtually no fat in here. So I have, um, let's see, I have a bunch of, of, here are I think pumpkin seeds. I just put all the stuff in, the, in whatever jars I have because, um, so here's cashews and here are some almonds. And so I put these as toppings for crunch and for extra flavor. So when they're in, I always get onions, super healthy, super flavorful, and they add a nice little crunch. And when they're in season, I put in peppers. But whatever's in season, I can put on top. On top, I could put, I don't have to put on anything, but I can put on onions, peppers, tomatoes, um, something, you know, crunchy things. And I'll, I'll, I guess for this one, I'll put in um, almonds. So I'll chop them. Now, the nuts are the one thing that can be kind of expensive. But when I want to save money, I go for peanuts. And if you're not allergic to peanuts, then they, they're usually like, I mean, let's see. Peanuts are something like $2, $3 a pound when I get them in bulk. Almonds can be more like six, seven dollars a pound, I think. Um, onions are like one or two dollars a pound. The, the green leafy vegetables are a couple dollars a pound when you get them in season. I never buy stuff that's been shipped in from California. I only get stuff that's from local farms in season. What about mushrooms? Oh yeah, I don't have any mushrooms now, but if you put in mushrooms, that adds a, a very rich flavor as well. So I didn't put any in, but they go great in there, in there too. And mushrooms I can choose, I can either put them in so that they go in like this, uh, get cooked, or I can put them in afterward. I don't put the onions in to cook because the flavor gets too dispersed and you don't get that crunch. You could put them in, but I prefer to get them raw. And everyone who comes over, if they put in the onions on their own, they put in too little. You can put in a lot of onion on this and it doesn't like mess you up your breath. Are you, do you, what about containers? Do you use glass for everything or do you stay away from plastic? What do you, what do you store your leftovers in? Yeah, I tend to put stuff, I don't get new plastic things, but my old stuff, I'm not throwing it away. So like this container is just a really old container. I'm gonna use it until it falls apart. Um, I won't get new plastic, but I have some stuff that like, you see that this was like a set from an old, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not gonna throw these out but I'll use them until they're done. But most things, I just have these jars that I pick up here and there. And I don't know, like, I don't know why I got this mason jar, but I use it. Like neighbors moving, I get stuff from them. We have a couple of questions regarding uh, veggies. Do you peel your veggies? And also your veggies have different cooking times. So are you concerned that they'll dissolve? Okay, good, great question. So the first thing is, Nothing will really go wrong. If I, the cauliflower dissolves pretty, if I put the cauliflower in there, it would, you wouldn't see, it would disappear. So cauliflower only, I, I would, I, I could add it at the end like the onions. Um, eventually you learn that like spinach cooks so fast, I don't have to put in the pressure cooker. I can just, when it's done, I can just put the spinach in afterward. But if I had put it in, it would be fine too. So, um, the legumes really take the longest to cook. As long as you put them, as long as you put in the, the right amount of time for the legumes, 
which your, the manual for your pressure cooker will tell you what the, what the right, right amount of time is. The vegetables will, will cook enough. They could possibly overcook. No, it's not a whole lot of damage done. It'll be overcooked, but then the next time you learn, put that in at the end instead of, inside, um, instead of to cook it, if that makes sense. You can just put it, when this comes out, it's gonna be boiling hot. Ah, it's done. Um, there's another question there. Do I want, oh, I washed the stuff before the camera's turned on. So I do wash the stuff, um, but it's also, it's good to know that the pressure cooker sterilizes everything. So nothing, like if I, nothing's gonna come out of there. I mean, if, you, it's, it, it, if you're into the enzymes and stuff, then it's not raw, but it's also gonna, like, um, I don't know, if there's meat eaters out there, you're not gonna get salmonella from this. I don't, I actually, I don't know. I, I think you wouldn't. I think it kills everything that goes in there. But we're not meat eaters, so it doesn't matter. So are you ever concerned about your calories? How many calories do you go, do you go for? Concerned about what? Calories. Calories? Yeah, how many calories are you aiming for? That's one of our questions. I eat to stuffed every meal. Back in the old days, when there was always Ben and Jerry's in here, and there was always uh, chips up here, if I went, I was pretty athletic, but I always had a bit of, you know, I didn't have definition on the abs. And then once I started doing this, once I started eating this way, I don't count anything. I just eat. I mean, I basically eat until stuffed or eat until full every single time. So it's gonna get a little bit loud here. There's not a lot of pressure in here. So you know when you open a bottle of soda, you gotta do it slowly. Or to, so you, I'm letting the pressure out a bit. And it takes, I don't know, a minute for the pressure to, to get out. And then I will show you the inside of it. And then I'll mix it up. It pains me more than it pains you that you don't get to taste it. I would love to do this in person and I hope one day to do it in person uh, as I did up in the Bronx that time. My record so far is some corporation brought me in to speak on sustainability and they did and I said, let's do some food. And so I cooked famous no packaging vegan stew for 50 people with nothing to throw away afterward. I take it back. They bought bread without telling me, and they bought avocados without telling me. So there was the, the bread came in a wrapper, and there were stickers on the, um, on the avocados. But they didn't tell me they were doing that. And they got alcohol sponsorship. I'm not going to count that. They had alcohol sponsorship too, but, which I didn't drink any of. But for the stuff that I touched, there was nothing to throw away afterward. And almost very little to compost. The only thing I'm composting here was the edges of the beets and the skin from the onion. I don't see anything else in here. Um, any other questions? Uh, one question, do you do, ever do sprouts? Sprouts, do you ever do sprouts? What's that? Sprouts, do you ever do, do sprouts? Sprout? sprouts? Oh, oh yes, I'm so glad you asked. I just started sprouting. I just learned how to do it. I do sprout, I sprouted, um, I'll take mung beans, put them in water, cover them in water overnight. Then the next day I put them into a, a strainer put a wet towel on top, let them sit. And once or twice a day, I squeeze out the, the rag, the, the, um, the, the moist towel. And then after a couple, and then I just keep changing that. And then after a couple of days, the sprouts form and I eat them. I also sprouted, um, yeah, the whole wheat. I sprout whole wheat, same process. It just takes a little longer. Uh, and I'm really excited about sprouting the mung beans because now I'm going to get greens in the middle of the winter. Normally in the winter, the last cabbage I see is usually January, February. So late February, March, I don't have any greens. So now, let me see if I can show this to you. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Can you guys see there's green and orange and red in there? I'm trying to, shit. That's why I was saying I see that. All right, so Osman, my cameraman was like, show it over here, show it over here. And so I just spilled some soup on the counter. Thank you. So now I take this nutritional yeast, plus in this case, the spices, I put it in.
I stood up. I get a bowl. And let me see if I, I'll try to put this a little closer to you guys. So I don't, I don't know how well people can see this. You can see, looks great. Can you see the colors? Yep, beautiful, beautiful. So now I have a stew in here, and now I'm gonna put some onions for some even more color and crunch. And I'm gonna put the nuts in. So now it's got a bit of fat, and that makes it in a little crunch too. And that is a famous no packaging vegan stew. Yeah, I'm not gonna fall for that one again. <laughs> He's telling me to tilt it more. Even more. <laughs> there we go, that's a great view. Let's see. All right. And in here, this I'm not sure how I'm not sure if you can see how full it is, but it's like about a third full. Normally when I do this, I would fill it all the way to the top. And so I would have about 10 meals worth of food. And now all I have to do, actually, right now it's got, it has almonds in there. But if I instead put some of these sunflower seeds in, it's gonna give it a really different texture, a really different flavor. If I put in the cashews instead, every little, all these little changes are very simple to do, but they make it very different. Any other questions? I wish you could, uh, how does it smell? Really, really good. Yeah. It smells amazing. <laughs> so if you couldn't hear him, he said, it's, it smells amazing. One time I had a friend over here and he took one bite and he was like, he looks at me and he goes, did you put meat in here? I swear it tastes like there's meat in here. And I didn't put any meat in it. The, the nutritionist gives it a kind of meaty flavor, not meaty, but um, any other questions? Um. We have Danny from the Bronx, who's so big on composting and recycling. He's, he's saying he wants to see your compost bin. <laughs> well, here's, here's the compost that I, I mean, I, I have a bowl that's on my counter. So it's kind of like messy. So I got some, this is from the onion I just did. This is from the beets I just did. This is from some garlic from before. When that fills up, it goes into this in my freezer. So you want to see some, some compost of mine? Sure, here's like some, I don't know, some greens from before. So this is like roughly a month's worth of compost for me. And when this fills up, I take it over to the Union Square Farmer's Market and they pick it up there. During the pandemic, they weren't picking it up in Union Square. So I just have like three months worth of, of, I had like three months worth of stuff in here. And I had to take it all the way to the Lower East Side Ecology Center. Um, there was something else I was gonna say. Yeah, let me get. This bag, there's nothing special about this bag, except that it's the only bag that I used to go shopping with. Everyone's like paper plastic. I bought this bag. You can see how like torn up it is. I bought this bag in the 90s. I've had one bag for the entire, that's what I use. Now I do go, um, if a neighbor's throwing out a plastic bag, I might use a, their, their plastic bag. like. I do have like one or two like this to store stuff in, but I will not accept this from a store. I will only get one that I will not increase demand. So I'm slowly weaning off of these and going to cloth stuff instead. Um, yeah. Did that answer the question about the compost? I think so. Cool. I think so. Okay, Jeff. It looks delicious. I'd like to taste it right now. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could put it through the camera. It's really like, it's like difficult for me not to eat it right now. It's actually gonna be super hot right now. And I mean, do you see how, I'm not sure how well you can see how different this one from the fridge, it's the same formula, 
but this one's black beans. And, oh, I don't think this was with the squash. Um, I don't have the squash here. It was an acorn squash. So is it black beans, acorn squash, instead of lima beans and beets? I think those are still beet greens. And then the, like if I looked very carefully, I could probably find the peppercorns in here because I put the peppercorns in too. If I wanted for even more color, yeah, right now I got some jalapenos. They would be super good in there. Actually for the, I'd probably put the red one in for a little extra red color. And these are in season right now. So that's why I happen to have those. Any other questions? Let's see. Fresh ginger root, can you use that? Yes, ginger, there's a few like ginger, turmeric root. If you, I put in turmeric powder, but if you put turmeric root, it's a meat, that's even better. Um, those I tend to put at the end, like I put the onion in. The ginger I tend to put in if I have split peas, after a while you start to, see, you start to develop which things mi mix with other things better. So like black beans for some reason, um, no, like split peas I put in, I like red carrots, orange carrots, because the color, the green and the orange look really good together. That's a, an appearance thing. And the ginger goes really well with that. Um, this, I think I put in, I think I mentioned um, sage because I happen to have a bunch of sage right now. So that's in here. But it's really what's in, what's in season. One of our guests is asking us about parsnips. Do you like to use parsnips? Yeah. In the winter? In the winter, the ratio of starchy vegetable to green leafy vegetable starts getting much more starch because there's not a whole lot of green leafy vegetables. If you want to go to the store and buy stuff that's from California, that's go ahead. But usually then I'm, by February, March, I'm, the green leafy stuff is all going to be the stuff that I've um, fermented. But parsnips could be instead of the beets. Um, rutabaga, that's another thing that I end up using a lot of in the, in the late winter when there's nothing else left. Yeah, cabbage start, it starts being like, once you hit, in New York City, once you hit January, it's really, you get a little bit of Brussels sprouts and then it's just cabbage for a while. But still there's different kinds of cabbage and cabbage stays in the fridge for a long time. So you can go shopping once or twice a week for this. Oh, if you, if you I get all the stuff in the bulk sections of the bulk food stores, but if you don't live in a place with bulk foods, you go to nuts.com and you're gonna lose a little bit on the zero packaging, but you can get huge, can you, I don't know if you can see down here. I have, I have a 50 pound bag that I bought in bulk of some nuts. So you can get really bulk stuff and, it's, and the price really drops when you do that. So if you, if you, if you don't wanna go zero packaging or you're not able to have a bulk food store near you, you can get, I mean, if you get 50 pounds or 25 pounds of lentils or legumes sent to you, it's not gonna go bad. Personally, I think, well, this is getting to politics and stuff, but you know, people talk about UBI and universal basic like income. I think people should have just, every house should get a big thing of beans delivered every month. That would be a great solution because it's like, it's nutritious, it's healthy, it comes straight from the farms, but that's getting off topic. So do you ever freeze vegetables? Do I freeze vegetables? Yes. In fact, I, my sister works with the farmer's markets. And so I went to visit her. She's out in Queens. And she, she, she was leaving and they were, they were getting rid of all of their, the, the farmer's market was getting rid of their bulk. Or, I'm sorry, they were, taking, they were taking stuff for their compost to go back to the farm. She said, ah, oh, my brother uses that stuff. So I got like 20, 30 pounds of beet greens, you know, people buy beets and they clip off the greens and the people don't want the greens. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know that it's super healthy. Same with carrots, par, um, uh, radishes. You, this works with radishes too, radish greens. And so I went to visit my sister and I came home with like 20 or 30 pounds of greens that other people had snipped off. So my fridge was entirely full. It was, you, I would open the fridge and no light would come out because it was so full. And so I put stuff in the freezer as well. I think that's how this got, this happened was like, I was like, 
let's try it a different way. Somebody's asking, do you, do you ever grind your nuts? If so, do you refrigerate grinded nuts and how long do they stay good? I've not had nuts go bad. I personally haven't ground them. I know that the Vitamix people do grind in there, but I just like, I prefer the crunch. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but I just haven't done it. I have gotten peanut butter at the stores where they have the grinder. So I don't know if people have that where they are, but there's places where you can pay by, you, you, you bring in a container, fill it up with, with, there's peanuts up there, you press the button and it grinds into your thing. So I've done that. But I just like whole nuts. All right, chop them up. Do you use herbs like parsley, dill, or cilantro as toppings? Mm. Yes. Hey, let me show you. Like, oh, I got, oh man. It's really good. And I've never had this one before. So here I have some, some sage in a plastic bag that I did not get from Whole Foods. I have spent at Whole Foods in the past 10 years, maybe $5. I don't like them. So uh, this is sage. And I would just, I wouldn't put it in there because it'll, it'll, the pressure cooker is too strong for it. So I can just put it on top like that. And then I have sage. Cilantro would be really good. I had some of that a little while ago. And they really all, it all works. I wish I could make like five different ones. Someday we'll have to do this. We'll do like, we'll have five pressure cookers and I'll have one person at each station and we'll just do this. In fact, I was invited to speak in, about a year ago I spoke on sustainability at an event hosted by the Swedish organization. And they invited me to go to Sweden to speak about sustainability. So I don't fly. So we're looking at for me how to sail it by boat, but also they asked me to do a pop-up restaurant. I was supposed to be in Sweden this spring. And we had talked about doing first a pop-up restaurant. And at the event that they were going to invite me to speak at, we were going to set up like 10 pressure cookers. And at each one, we were going to put a different set of this mix of ingredients. And I was going to stand up at the front and say, all right, everyone add in the legumes, add in the green leafy vegetable, add in the starchy vegetable, add in the water, press start. And then at the end, everyone would put in the nutritional yeast. And then everybody would get to go around and taste all the different ones and sample that they're all very different, even though the process was exactly the same. Maybe I can do that in New York sometime soon. I hope so. Maybe a couple more questions. Um, when, when you air cook only vegetables, it is important to respect their colors. What do you think? When I air cook, pressure cook or air cook? It says air cook. So when I, when I say the question again? So it's a statement. When air cook only vegetables, it is, is it, it is important to respect their colors. What do you think? Oh, um, yeah, the, I mean, I've come to think of something I learned from, I think, Michael Greger. The color is the nutrition. The cut, like, I, I sometimes get white onions, but I basically switch to purple onions because the color is, my understanding is that that is the phytonutrients. I, this one is green because it came through my CSA that way, but I generally prefer to get red ones. Uh, I try to get the most colorful vegetables that I can. I like more color. It looks prettier, but I understand it's more nutritious. So I, and I also try to, like this one, I like how the, the colors have mixed in there. I'm not sure if I addressed the question, but color, I try to get a wide variety of colors. I think most Americans, they tend to have brown, orange, and yellow food, and that's it. Bread with cheese on some meat or something like that. I don't like to eat like that. We have another question here. How do you use vinegar? Oh, I put vinegar in a lot of stuff. I mean, I, vinegar is another flavor that I put on here. Um, I eat a lot of salad. Most of the time when I'm not doing a video, I'm pretty full by the time I, the, by the time I start the pressure cooker, I've been chopping and eating while preparing. Normally I would eat some of the beet raw. I would eat some of the, I'd nibble on stuff while I was preparing it especially like I'm looking at these collard greens over here. I love collard greens. The stems are really good, especially from where I get them. They're really juicy stems. 
So I'm usually pretty full by the time I start cooking. But a lot of the stuff I also make salads out of. So that's the other big thing. I, like more than half of what I eat. Here's most of what I eat. Famous no packaging vegan stew, salads, and for breakfast it's oats, nuts, fruits, and whatever I put, and, and you know, some um, cocoa powder or cacao or uh, cinnamon and some spices on there. And that's most of what I eat. The salad, my salad dressing is generally, um, I put on some vinegar, I put on some tamari, which I also get from the bulk food store, which I'm out of, and nutritional yeast. And those three together are pretty good. Then I throw in whatever spices I feel like putting on top of there. But that's like my go-to, tamari, vinegar, and um, uh, nutritional yeast. And then I just let the vegetables show, the vegetables come out. They will put a lot more spices on, uh, not spices, herbs. Joshua, what about when it comes to sweets, cacao, dessert time? How do you play with cacao or dessert? How do you create? That, first of all, no added sugar to anything. Um, it's, I eat a lot of fruit. I mean, I go through a lot of fruit. That, See, my cameraman is saying he's got to, I, I, I can't get, if you want, I can do another episode on what I do for sweets and desserts, because I go through a lot of fruit. Okay. Okay, well, we're coming up on a quarter, wait, about 17 already, so um, is there any last um, piece of information oh, yeah. or you'd like to share with our participants? Well, check out joshuaspodek.com and... Um, I'll send a link to the, there's, um, I did do a page where I wrote up these ingredients. And so I'll send a link to people so that they can, you know, it's legume, green leafy vegetable, starchy vegetable, uh, new, uh, whole grain and nutritional yeast. But I can send a link on that. Um, I'm a little frazzled because we got started in a funny way. Well, we I, hope could, people, I hope people could roll with me on that one. We could, we'll, we could do this again. I, I'd like to remind our participants that we have an ongoing web series and uh, you could see our future events that are posted on our website, Plant Powered Metro New York. And they could join our mailing list and we're on social media like Facebook, Instagram, Meetup, YouTube. And if you're inspired by our work, you can support us uh, through donations on our website since a lot of the work we do is um, free of charge. Uh, you can visit our website and click on donate and uh, see you again. If we find a way to social distance and do this in person, it's painful that I can't have people taste this right now. So hopefully you can find a way to social distance and do it in person where people can try it in person. Yes. Let's talk Rob, Rob, round robin style next time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for, for handling. Uh, everything got frazzled a bit, so I was kind of rushed. It's usually a little bit more um, smooth, but I hope people try it. If people try it, please let me know. If you have questions and I can help make it troubleshoot or something like that, or if you're not used to, um, if, you, if, if people get a pressure cooker for the first time and they want a little help with that, let me know and I'll do what I can. But really, I want to I want to get people so that they can get fresh vegetables in season when they're cheapest and most plentiful and most flavorful. And I want, I want farmer's markets all over the city, especially I want food deserts filled with farmer's markets, not Walmart, not big box stores that impoverish neighborhoods, but filled with farmers that, that want you to have the stuff that was just got picked that morning or the day before. So that when, when the kids take the chard home, the moms know exactly what to do with it, that everyone knows what to do with it. That's what this is really about for me. It's like, to fill neighborhoods with fresh, whole vegetables, fruit, legumes, mushrooms. It's so, like six years ago, there's no way I could have believed that I would eat the way that I do. And now it's like, I eat to stuffed every meal. I spend less money than I ever have. It's more convenient. Before the pandemic, people came over more than ever before. I go to restaurants and it's like disappointing in comparison because they're all salt, sugar, fat. This is, <clears throat> the only fat in here is from the nuts, the sugar is from the vegetables. I could go on. Thank you, Josh. We, to be continued, we'll be doing this again. Thank you. Thank so you all much. very much. It was great. Thank you.